sharing of raw extremism in the energy field. Energy is something that you can create in so many different ways. Some of it has short-term effect and it will make you feel like you are the greatest, you are the most athletic, your brain is on fire, you're downloading divine wisdom and knowledge. But then there's the crash that happens. And of course, you could sleep it off, but you pay the price. And the whole battle rages in the caffeination front, or the cocaine front, or any kind of a stimulant front, is between alkalinity and alkaloids. There are many alkaloids in nature, and used in moderation, it will alter your state of consciousness. Used in moderation, it will be like a temporary vacation. However, the same alkaloid influence can be gotten through continuous ongoing alkalizing lifestyle. I wish to share with you some very interesting phenomena as I observed historically. I know you're going to date me. Well, I don't mind you coming and dating me. I do dates all the time. I like chewing on them. They're very sweet stuff. And sometimes, hey, call me. So anyways, my dating goes back to the time of marijuana when it was such a strong force for good. We had already gone past the period of where the president promised us a, ch a car in every garage and a chicken in every pot. <coughs> well a lot of kids forgot the chicken and got into the pot and you know what it was all for good because out of ascetic lifestyles, all of a sudden they were lit up with temporary alkalinity. That's what alkaloids do. They neutralize the acidic condition, though they themselves do not participate in the nutritional environment within your body, so eventually it's got to kick that stuff out. So like whether it is nicotine or caffeine or, or the alkaloids associated with cocaine or associated with marijuana, Temporarily, they make you feel like you are flying. But it gave them insight to such things as spirituality, divinity, getting out of the city, and community life started. Killing was bad, and the anti-war movement became initiated. That was all because of marijuana. No marijuana, we would have still been sitting and eating chicken in our pots and going dumber. Now we have the most alive period in history, the most exciting. And a lot of it has contributed to the wonderful marijuana. Yes, I know people say, gee, are you talking like that? No, it's reality. But what happened in these communities? They became vegan. They gardened. They ate food from the garden. And the more they ate the living food from the garden, the more alkaline they became. And eventually, they were staying high all the time. And then they had those rituals of, oh, we're just going to get a little higher on marijuana. And would you have a bummer trip? What the hell is a bummer trip? Simple. Bummer trip is when you have gone into alkalosis. In other words, far out of the range of the blood profile and you felt wasted. Eventually, those who were wise, they stuck to staying high on what? Purely alkaline diet. Also, balancing their over alkalinity because it's easy enough to move into too much alkalinity by physical activity, robust yoga, qigong, running, fitness, swimming, dancing, whirling, doing all the kind of good stuff of activity so that there was a balance of the yin and the yang and you were always in the zone and you stayed high. Clear, joyous, blissful. That's the natural state. 
So we have a nation that is acidic. Everything that they eat is acidic and that coffee makes them temporarily go on a vacation from acidity into temporary feeling what it feels like alkaline. And now individuals who are on a mostly pretty alkaline diet, if they have a cup of coffee, if they're not too alkaline, doesn't push them to alkaloid state, they'll feel even better. They'll feel temporarily an exciting adventure. If you're on a kind of a meager vegan diet where you're doing a, a lot of, you might say, a, a lot, a lot of cooked foods, they're acidifying. Just like the people at Summertown, Tennessee, the farm, it was an acidic vegan diet, and as a result, the marijuana served a great purpose. They kept high, and mosquitoes are coming to visit us. And they stayed high when they needed to, and they stayed low when they got into their meal plan. But uh, it kept them on the move to our quest of spirituality. So here, when you consume a relatively acidic-oriented diet, the caffeine will make a big difference, make you feel temporarily fine. And most of us can handle a cup. And, and then you go, your hands will start shaking. I remember I was doing an experiment on myself. The impact of withdrawal associated with stopping of coffee. I drank three cups of coffee. And then I washed myself become a neurological wreck. I just feel like everything was disappearing on me. And I took four capsules of blue-green algae and I took them sublingually, chewed them up, and within a matter of a few minutes became totally stabilized. Withdrawal reactions, in other words, became almost like non-existent. That's how powerful is the influence of blue-green algae in relationship to withdrawal from anything. So try to live by the alkalinity, but occasionally, if you want to try alkaloids, that is your experimentation in consciousness vacation, and don't beat yourself up on it. Instead, just look at it as honorable medicine that you are temporarily using it to take you to the next level where it is not essential, and it isn't essential to stay high all the time. Combining meditation, quiet mind, alkaline nutrition, are you going to have such clarity, especially when you incorporate fasting as part of your regular dietary approach? Then your mind will be in mindset and you will be high, not wanting anything more than the divine light and living by the laws of Jesus, uh, of nature. From life comes life and from death comes death. For every time you do something that is out of the righteousness, you are sacrificing some aspect of yourself. Not that it is impossible to rejuvenate and bounce back, but Eventually, you are so happy with yourself, in your relationships with others, in the service that you provide to the community, so that you don't need anything more than the eye of nature. And you'll find that will give you the most amount of natural rhythms, the rhythm of waking up early in the morning, three, four o'clock, the ability to go to bed, 11, 10, sleeping three, four, five hours, unless you are competing to be an Olympic athlete or a bodybuilder, then you might need six, eight hours. But natural cycles, wheatgrass, green juices are your high if you want to be most alkaline, go green. Have the strength of a stallion, the power of a bull, the virility of a gorilla. 
you have access to that. It's all in the greens. The most powerful foods are green, not black coffee, not black tea or green tea. And none of the teas are green, though the name implies something green. Try the green juices and you will find that you'll be a happy camper. And uh, finding your space so that your exploration of any of the alkaloids will be unnecessary, whether it is ayahuasca or marijuana or cocaine or LSD. Hello, doggy dogs. Is God spelled backwards? <laughs> and he's trying to tell me, shut up, you talk too much. So, hey, it's been fun. Let's get together again. I am Reverend Victorious. Dot org and uh, life is good in God's neighborhood and you are always there all you have to do is open up quiet your mind and be in a state of stillness and receptivity God is your life and you are God and God is we are born to be great just be yourself be you and that's all we can expect from you. I love you. Mm -hmm.